This video has been brought to you by Audible. Stick around till the end of the video to find out more. Greece, home of smash plates, Zeus and countless English tourists. Seriously, I'm sorry guys, but it's your fault for having such a lovely country. And while speaking of the English, all the English speaking world calls the land of Ooza and philosophy Greece. You know, like the goo. Yet in Greece, Greece isn't called Greece, it's called Hellas. I'm sure you know the drill by now guys. So why is Hellas called Greece in English? So, first off, let's just say that Greece isn't even called Greece in the English language. Its official English name is the Hellenic Republic in relation to its Greek name Hellas. Yet, I'm sure most people would look at you with glazed eyes if you called it that as opposed to Greece, so let's stick with Greece. The key reason as to why the land is called Greece in one language and Hellas in another is due to the word roots. Greece's root is in Latin and Hellas's root is in Greek, by some surprise. Greece comes from the Romans with the Latin terms Glacus and and Glacians. In mythology, Grecus was the son of Zeus and he was supposedly the namesake for the Glacian tribe of ancient Greeks. The Glacians are believed to be the first Greeks to colonise Italy. They were primarily in the coastal area of southern Italy. These Greeks were most likely the first Greeks Latin speakers ever came across, which led to all Greek people being named after the Glacians in Latin, calling the people the Glaci and the lands of Glacia, which over time evolved into the English name Greece. The name Hellas, however, seems to throw up a lot more confusion and less clear-cut origins. One etymology tells us it means the land of sun and stone in Greek. It's also believed to have come from the mythological character Helen. His name is believed to not only be the source for the name Hellas, but he's believed to be the forefather to the Greek people as a whole. In Homer's Iliad, the tribe led by Achilles were called Hellenus and Hellas too, so it wouldn't be too much of a stretch to believe that the country was named after him. So, in the same way Greece got its name from its people, the Greeks, Hellas too got its name from its people, the Hellenes. Also, this Helen has nothing to do with the one of Troy, just to save confusion. Yet, Greece seems to have a second name in Greece too, Ilatha. Without being Greek myself, I find it hard to figure out when to use what term. In example, the Greek national football team are called Ethniki Elafos, clearly using the Elafa name, but they're controlled by the Hellenic Football Federation. From what I can gather, and with the help of some friendly relatives and friends of friends, the difference in names are used under different circumstances. Halas is the more formal traditional name that you'd write down, and Elafa is used on a more day-to-day -day basis. Elafa in Greek looks a little like this, and while it looks like it starts with an E, the squiggle that looks like an apostrophe to you and me actually indicates that there should be a breathy H huh sound before the vowel. So, Alafa can be pronounced like Helafa, explaining the origins of the two names. If you are Greek, then chime in down below in the comments about these two names for your country. And if you've made it to the end of this video, then Opa and Yamas to you. That's pretty much the only Greek I know. This video has been sponsored by Audible. Audible is a leading provider of premium digital spoken audio information and entertainment on the internet and can be accessed across pretty much every device under the sun. Audible is a service I've been using for years now while commuting and even when animating videos for Name Explain, so I'm very happy to have them here as a sponsor today. With an unmatched selection of audio products, there will no doubt be something there for you to enjoy. I have been listening to Harry Potter and the Prison of Azkaban by JK Rowling, read by Stephen Fry, while animating this video, and I'd highly recommend it. I'm sure you know what Harry Potter is so I won't go into details but I have never read all the books from start to finish so this is my first proper journey into the world of Harry Potter and having Rowling's words read to me by Stephen Fry is definitely magic if you'd pardon the pun. Viewers of this video can get a free audiobook along with a free 30-day trial period by going to www.audible.com slash name explain all lowercase and browsing the unmatched selection of audio content Audible has to offer. Download Harry Potter or any other audiobook for that matter for free and start listening today. Even if you don't wish to carry on using their service, that free audiobook is yours to keep forever. So once again guys, that's www.audible.com slash name explain. Click the link down below and start listening today. Thank you.